Hello everyone. So, in this part uh, we will be showing some uh, recipes tutorial ok. Because uh, you know what I experience uh, again in the field that uh, many times we used to tell mothers ki uh, ye khana do, wo khana do you know and when we would do home visits you know when mother would again would go back to her own uh, you know that uh, monotonous uh, rice and dal, rice and dal or khichdi you know. So, here what we decided uh, at the health spoken tutorial that we actually actually wanted to show recipes and uh, that is what we did at uh, FMCH and also at uh, Srimati Malti Dhanuka Trust that uh, we had uh, you know that cooking demos once a week. So, what we would do basically we would call mothers of uh, babies with same age group ok. And so, for example, we would call mothers say between uh, babies you know mothers of babies with between 6 to 8 months and we would show her few recipes ok. And then we would show her how to feed the baby because a lot of time you know mothers they kind of make the baby lie down in, in, a, uh, in a lap and then they feed the baby in a horizontal position and that is not a good position to feed the baby right uh, especially solid food. So, we uh, through this um, you know cooking demos we would we would teach her what is responsive feeding, we would teach them uh, like how to uh, understand uh, uh, hunger cues, we would teach them how to kind of uh, you know uh, understand that uh, whether baby is full or not you know. So, this way you know it was much easier for baby uh, mothers to have a behavior change because complementary feeding stage is one stage where I, I had uh, I mean uh, tremendous difficulty in behavior change you know I mean it has come we have come a long way because many times uh, you know earlier you know mother would just not kind of understand what you were saying. So, we had to actually demonstrate you know in a clinic bring those mothers with those babies we would feed those babies in front of mothers we would teach them how to feed and that is when you know they realize oh my god pe to bachcha sab khata hai, you know and they would go home and then try it on the baby ok. So, you can do this in your program you can have uh, either recipe videos kind of you can uh, show to begin with and if you have access to you know uh, like I say uh, you know some uh, material and cooking gas and all that you can quickly show mothers how to uh, kind of make these recipes at home and feed the baby ok. So, again uh, we have created different tutorials for different age group. So, we have vegetarian recipes for 6 months, non veg recipes for 6 months, uh, 7 months age, uh, 8 to 11 months of age um, and of course, 11 to you know 12 months to 18 months. So, we have all these different age group recipes because a consistency of food is very important ok. So, of course, when babies are ready to start uh, complementary feeding you know um, I personally do recommend for at least 3 to 4 weeks you want to give pureed food ok. Because I do see like I work in urgent care uh, and in, in, in US and I do see a lot of choking hazard choking episodes. So, uh, you know I mean you can try uh, you know baby led weaning, but I am little bit skeptical. So, there is no hurry to uh, start giving chunky food from um, 6 months. So, children will learn ok. So, first 3 4 weeks or so I mean 6 to 7 months I recommend still a pureed uh, food. Uh, again you know uh, first food uh, very it should be nutrient dense you know and start those powder recipes because I have given powder recipes in this tutorial also. So, you start with one, uh, one particular powder, but with one ingredient like for example, we have taught about uh, you know peanut and sesame seed powder. So, what I recommend when you are starting something new do not mix peanut and sesame together just do one ingredient powder. So, just do peanut powder and add it in children's uh, khichdi or children whatever that you are giving you know. So, start one powder one ingredient powder at a time and one if child does not have allergy to that particular ingredient then you can add another ingredient you know to that powder ok. So, that is important. Also remember that uh, non-veg food can be given by 6 months of age ok. Uh, of course, completion of 6 months of age, but uh, you know uh, many mothers have the skeptical they are skeptical that whether I can start egg or not, whether I can start uh, you know chicken, whether I can start uh, fish absolutely you can start ok. And in fact, uh, you do not want to wait for too long to start those uh, food because then the risk of allergy increases. So, uh, just remember to uh, you know uh, 
give this food uh, as early as possible as soon as child finishes 6 months of age ok. So enjoy your recipes if you have any recommendation if you have any suggestion please write to us and we will definitely consider it. Uh, if you need more recipes uh, kind of for young children uh, let us know we will ask our nutritionist to make some more recipes. Uh, also there are some really good recipes uh, for a celebration ok and here I have to kind of uh, mention uh, one of our one of my very dear colleague Dr. Rekha uh, and she has uh, kind of encouraged us to create recipes for celebration because what happens is many times uh, this uh, you know when they when children go to I am talking about older children when they go to uh, parties you know they are exposed to cakes and uh, samosas and all these different you know some uh, sodas and all these different foods which are not necessarily healthy you know. So we have created uh, one tutorial on uh, how to make healthy celebration recipes. So I will uh, try to put it in this session uh, if we have time definitely uh, kind of I will I will put in those uh, recipes also. Uh, we are also coming up with recipes uh, like for example uh, chutneys you know uh, and other uh, you know non veg powders also so you can order those non veg powders in chutney if you remove uh, say too much of spices uh, say chilies you can also kind of add it in children's food because it's a extremely nutritious uh, chutneys you know they are like paste you know so do use this uh, those um, and uh, let me know if you have any any uh, kind of questions on those recipes okay thank you so much Welcome to this spoken tutorial on vegetarian recipes for 6 month old babies. In this tutorial we will learn introduction to complementary feeding and how to prepare vegetarian recipes such as black eyed beans puree, pumpkin puree, ragi porridge, sorghum porridge and spinach leaves puree. Before we begin it is important to remember that exclusive breastfeeding is recommended for the first 6 months. After completion of 6 months, breast milk is not enough for the baby. Therefore, along with breastfeeding, the baby should be fed home cooked food too. It is known as complementary feeding. While introducing a complementary food to the baby, start one food at a time. It will help to find if the baby is allergic to any food. Once the baby gets comfortable, start giving the combination of ingredients. Initially, start with 1 tablespoon twice a day, then gradually go up to 4 tablespoons twice a day. Apart from these, while preparing the baby's food, always use local, regional and seasonal ingredients. Please do not add salt and honey in baby's food till she turns 1. Also, do not add sugar and jaggery until the baby is 2 years of age. After completion of 6 months, the baby requires up to 200 calories of energy from complementary foods. Only well cooked and pureed form of the food should be given. Let's begin with our recipes. But before that, keep in mind, one can use breast milk, coconut milk or boiled and cooled water to make the following recipes. The first recipe is black eyed beans puree. To make it, we will need black eyed beans or cow peas. Firstly, soak the black eyed beans for around 9 to 12 hours. Remove it in a strainer and rinse it thoroughly using water. Let all the water drain out. Then tie it in a clean cotton cloth. Keep it aside till it sprouts. This process is called germination. Take out these beans in a steel container and soak it for an hour or two. Then gently remove the outer cover by rubbing between fingers. Separate the outer covers and take out these beans in a steel pot. Add water until the beans get covered. Keep this steel pot in a pressure cooker. Cook it until 4 to 5 whistles. Remove it from the flame and allow it to cool for some time. 
Now, gently separate cooked outer covers if there are any. And make a puree of boiled beans using a mixer or a stone grinder. Add a little amount of boiled water or the remaining pressure cooked water. And the black eyed beans puree is ready. This black eyed beans puree is rich in protein, phosphorus, iron, zinc, and magnesium. To make such purees, you can also use any locally available alternatives such as moth beans, Bengal gram, yellow peas, red lentils, green peas, kidney beans, chickpeas, horse gram, etc. The second recipe is pumpkin puree. For that, we require 250 grams of yellow pumpkin. And for the preparation, take cleaned and washed pumpkin. Remove the seeds. Dice it in small pieces. Then cook it in a steamer for around 15 minutes. Remove it from the flame and let it cool for some time. Now make a puree of this cooked pumpkin using a mixer or a stone grinder. The pumpkin puree is ready. This pumpkin puree is a source of vitamin A, folate, choline, potassium and sulfur. If pumpkin is not available then other vegetables used are green pumpkin, white pumpkin etc. Now we will see the third recipe which is ragi porridge. For that we will require 1 tablespoon of ragi powder. Please note that ragi powder is different from ragi flour. For this recipe we need ragi powder. Therefore we will first see how to make ragi powder. To prepare it firstly soak the ragi for around 9 to 12 hours. Remove it in a strainer and rinse it thoroughly using water. Let all the water drain out. Then tie it in a clean cotton cloth. Keep it aside till it sprouts. This process is called germination. After that, dry it in the sunlight for a day or two. Then roast it on a low flame for about 10 to 12 minutes. Remember, continuous stirring is required. This entire process will reduce the phytic acid from the food. Now, make a powder of it using a mixer or a stone grinder. We can store this powder for a week in an airtight container in a dry, cool place. Next, to make ragi porridge, take 1 tablespoon of this ragi powder. Add boiled and cooled water or other alternatives as explained earlier. Mix it well to avoid lumps. Cook this mixture for about 7 to 10 minutes on a low flame. Add little amount of water during cooking if required. It will bring down the consistency of porridge. But make sure the consistency of the porridge should not be thin or watery. The ragi porridge is now ready. This ragi porridge provides various nutrients such as protein, calcium, iron, potassium and sulfur. The fourth recipe is sorghum porridge. For that we will require 2 tablespoons of sorghum powder. And to make the powder, soak the sorghum in water for 7 to 8 hours. After which put it in the strainer and rinse it thoroughly with water. Let all the water drain out. Now tie it in a clean cotton cloth and keep it aside till it sprouts. Dry this sprouted sorghum under the sunlight for a day or two. Roast it on a low flame for 10 to 12 minutes. Then grind it and make a powder of it. We can store this powder for a week in an airtight container in a dry cool place. Take 2 tablespoons of this sorghum powder in a bowl. Add 4 to 5 teaspoons of boiled and cooled water or other alternatives as mentioned earlier. Mix well to avoid lump formation. Now cook this mixture on a low flame for 4 to 6 minutes and the sorghum porridge is ready. Note that 
The sorghum porridge is rich in protein, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, selenium, sulfur, and iron. The fifth recipe is spinach leaves puree. To make spinach leaves puree, we require two cups of washed and trimmed spinach leaves and one teaspoon of ghee. Procedure Heat one teaspoon of ghee in a pan. Add washed and trimmed spinach leaves. Saute it for 5 to 7 minutes on a low flame. Now take out these sorted leaves on a plate and make a puree of it using a stone grinder or a mixer. Now our spinach leaves puree is ready. Spinach leaves are a source of vitamin A, folate, vitamin C, iron, magnesium and calcium. One can use any locally available leafy vegetables to make such kind of puree. For example, red amaranth leaves, drumstick leaves, radish leaves, fenugreek leaves and mustard leaves. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on non-vegetarian recipes for 6 month old babies. In this tutorial, we will learn importance of introducing non-vegetarian complementary foods to the babies and how to prepare non-vegetarian complementary foods such as egg puree, fish puree, raw banana fish porridge, chicken liver puree and chicken carrot puree. Let us begin. Always remember that once the baby is 6 months old, nutrient requirement of the baby increases remarkably. She requires up to 200 calories of energy from complementary foods. Along with breastfeeding, complementary feeding should be started. Apart from these, gradually as the baby's age increases, the quantity and consistency of the food should be changed. Please note that while feeding the baby, the quantity of food should be measured using cups and spoons. As it has been explained in another tutorial of the same series. When the baby completes 6 months, initially start with 1 tablespoon twice a day, then gradually go up to 4 tablespoons twice a day and only well cooked pureed form of the food should be given. Now we will see how non-vegetarian foods are important for the babies. All the non-vegetarian foods are rich in good fats, protein and many other micronutrients. These nutrients are essential for proper growth and development of the babies and their brain development. The recommended foods to be given to the babies are cage-free poultry, eggs, meat and all kind of fish except for shellfish which can be introduced after one year of age. Remember the following things in mind while introducing non-vegetarian foods. Do not give any processed meat and raw food to the baby. It should be cooked thoroughly. And most importantly, while cooking baby's food, always avoid using microwave oven. We have discussed 6 month old baby's requirement and importance of non-vegetarian complementary foods. Now we will see how to make these non-vegetarian complementary foods. Let's begin with our first recipe which is egg puree. To make this egg puree, we will need one egg and half teaspoon ghee or butter. To prepare it, take the egg and beat it thoroughly in a bowl. Then. Heat the ghee in a steel pot. Pour the beaten egg in this steel pot and start stirring on a low flame. Remove it from the flame in between as continuous cooking will burn the egg puree. Keep stirring the mixture and cook it till it thickens. Turn off the flame and the egg puree is ready. Let it cool for some time and feed it to the baby. 
The second recipe that we will see is fish puree. For this, we require two pieces of any locally available fish such as black pomfret, bombay duck, white pomfret and squid. Take two pieces of the cleaned and washed fish in a steel pot. Add water till the fish gets covered. Keep this steel pot in a pressure cooker and pressure cook it until 3 to 4 whistles. Let it cool for some time after which take the pieces of fish out on a plate. Now carefully remove all the bones. It is utmost important that before feeding the baby, bones of this fish are removed as they can choke the baby. Now in a mixer, puree the boiled fish and feed it to the baby. The third recipe is raw banana fish porridge. To prepare it, we need 2 tablespoons of raw banana powder, 4 small pieces of Bombay duck or any local fish. First, we will begin with the preparation of raw banana powder. Take 2 raw bananas of any variety that is locally available in your area. Peel them using a peeler. Now, cut these bananas into thin slices. Dry these slices under the shade for 1 to 2 days until they become crisp. Then make a powder of these dried raw banana slices in a mixer. Save this powder and remove the seeds. The raw banana powder is ready for use. Next, to make a fish puree, follow the instructions as mentioned in the previous recipe. After that, Take 2 tablespoons of raw banana powder in a bowl. Add 3 teaspoons of water and mix it well to avoid lump formation. Add more water if required. Now, cook this mixture on a low flame for 5 to 7 minutes. After that, add cooked fish puree in it. Keep stirring the mixture and cook for next 4 to 5 minutes on a low flame. The raw banana fish porridge is ready. Let it cool for some time and then feed it to the baby. Now we come to the fourth recipe, the chicken liver puree. To make this, we need one chicken liver. Procedure Start the preparation by taking washed chicken liver in a steel pot. Add water till it gets covered. Now keep this steel pot in a pressure cooker. Pressure cook it until 3 to 4 whistles. After it cools down, take it out on a plate. Make a puree of the boiled chicken liver using a mixer and feed it to the baby. Now we will see the fifth recipe, chicken carrot puree. We will need 4 to 5 small pieces of chicken breast or boneless chicken and 1 carrot. Start the preparation by taking washed pieces of chicken breast in a steel pot. Then add water till it gets covered. Now keep this steel pot in a pressure cooker and cook it until 3 to 4 whistles. Let it cool for some time and then take out the chicken pieces on a plate and let it cool. Next, steam the carrot for 10 minutes and let it cool. Make a puree of boiled chicken pieces and the steamed carrot together using a mixer. Coming to the nutrient content of these recipes, note that all these recipes are rich in protein, DHA and EPA which are omega-3 fatty acids, choline, vitamin A, vitamin D, Vitamin B3, Vitamin B6, Folate, Vitamin B12, Zinc, Magnesium, Iron, Phosphorus, Copper, and selenium. These nutrients are easily available in non-vegetarian food sources.
therefore they help in growth development and strengthening the immunity of the baby this brings us to the end of this tutorial welcome to the spoken tutorial on nutritious powder recipes for 6 to 24 month old children in this tutorial we will learn various recipes of nutritious powders such as amylase powder powder of seeds powder of nuts and seeds powder of beans powder of curry leaves and powder of drumstick leaves there are various nutritious powders which can be made at home without much effort these powders have nutrients which support the growth and development of infants it is recommended that these powders should be given to the baby when she completes 6 months of age whenever any powder is introduced to a baby it should be added in baby's food for 3 or 4 consecutive days after 3 or 4 days introduce a new powder to the baby these two powders can be mixed but both powders should have been tried individually and the baby should not have had any allergies like rashes or swelling on the face and the body. Whenever any powder containing allergens such as nuts is introduced to the child then start with the small portion such as the tip of a teaspoon. Wait for 10 minutes and then gradually feed it to the child. Please do not add salt in baby's food till she turns 1. Also, do not include sugar and jaggery until the baby is 2 years of age. Now, let's learn how to make these nutritious powders at home. But before that, keep in mind, the recipes in this tutorial have been made using the following methods. Soaking, roasting, germination, and cooking. Cooking may include any one or combination of following methods, dry roasting, steaming and boiling. All these methods will reduce phytates and oxalates in the food which prevents absorption of minerals from the food and will improve nutrient absorption from the food. Now let's begin with our first recipe amylase powder. But first, let us discuss the benefits of it. Amylase is an enzyme or chemical required for the digestion of food. It is produced in a limited amount in the baby's body. This powder provides additional amylase and increases nutrient content and absorption from the food in which it is added. Thus, amylase rich flour or amylase powder should be given to the baby. Let's learn the recipe for amylase powder. Ingredients required for making amylase powder are half cup of wheat, half cup of green gram and half cup of ragi. Procedure First, soak all the items separately in water for around 10 hours. Soaking will improve the moisture content of ingredients. After 10 hours, remove all the items Keep them in a strainer and let all the water drain out. Then one by one tie all the ingredients in a clean and dry cotton cloth. Keep them aside till they sprout. This process is called germination. Note that some items will take longer time and some will take a shorter period of time for germination. Here ragi will take longer time than other ingredients. After germination, dry them in the sunlight for a day or two. After drying, roast all the items on a low flame till they completely dry off. Remember, during roasting, continuous stirring is required. Next, separate the outer cover of all items by rubbing between clean hands. After removing the outer cover, mix all the ingredients. Now. Make a powder of this mixture using the grinder and the amylase powder is ready. Store this amylase powder in an airtight container. 
One can add one teaspoon of amylase powder in various baby food before cooking such as thick dals, vegetable puree and khichdi. Otherwise, one can also make a porridge of amylase powder. One teaspoon of amylase powder gives around 18 calories and 0.6 grams of protein. Amylase powder has some unique properties which makes it special for a baby. It decreases the thickness of the food. Hence, more amylase powder can be added in baby's food as it reduces the bulk of the baby's food and makes it nutrient dense. Next, we will learn the recipe for powder of seeds. This powder is rich in zinc, fiber, magnesium and calcium. These nutrients help in bone development and improve the strength of the baby. Also, this powder is a source of good fat which supports brain development in children. The three different seeds required to make this powder are half cup of black sesame seeds, half cup of flax seeds and half cup of raw pumpkin seeds. Procedure One by one, dry roast all the seeds on a low flame for around 4 to 5 minutes. Once cooled, make a powder of all roasted items. Keep this powder in an airtight jar. One teaspoon of this powder should be added to the baby's food just before cooking. It will provide around 30 calories and 2.7 grams of protein. Our next recipe is powder of nuts and seeds. This powder is rich in minerals such as zinc, magnesium, iron, etc. These minerals play a major role in production of red blood cells. Also, this powder is a source of good fat which supports brain development in children. The ingredients required for making a powder of nuts and seeds are half cup of peanut, half cup of dried shredded coconut, half cup of flax seeds and half cup of black sesame seeds. Procedure one by one dry roast all the seeds and nuts on a medium flame for around 4 to 6 minutes. Then make a powder of all the roasted seeds by using a stone grinder or a mixer grinder. Keep this powder in an airtight container. One teaspoon of this powder can be added in the baby's food before cooking. It provides around 28 calories and 0.9 grams of protein. Now we will learn the recipe for powder of beans. This powder is rich in potassium, protein, folate, magnesium, etc. These nutrients help in bone development and improve the strength of the baby. They are also required for the production of red blood cells in our body. Ingredients required for making powder of beans are half cup of green gram, half cup dried green peas, half cup of chickpeas and half cup of moth beans. Procedure First, soak all the items in water separately for 10 hours. Soaking will improve the moisture content of ingredients. After 10 hours, remove all the items. Keep them in a sieve and let all the water drain out. Then, one by one, tie all the beans in a clean and dry cotton cloth. Keep them aside till they sprout. This entire process is called germination. Please note, as we discussed earlier, the duration of germination will be different for each ingredient. After germination, dry them in the sunlight for a day or two. Then roast all the beans on a medium flame till they completely dry off. During roasting, continuous stirring is required. It will avoid burning of all ingredients. After roasting, separate outer cover of all dried beans by rubbing between clean hands. Now grind all the beans together and make a powder of it. Keep this powder in an airtight container. Two teaspoons of this powder should be added to the baby's food during cooking. Two teaspoons of this powder provide around 33 calories and 1.8 grams of protein. Next we will learn the recipe for powder of curry leaves. Curry leaves are rich in fiber, iron, calcium and vitamin C. All these nutrients play a vital role in digestion and tooth development. 
Also, they boost the immunity of the baby. We will need curry leaves for making this powder. Procedure Wash curry leaves thoroughly in clean water. Let them dry under the shade. Then make a powder of these dried curry leaves and store this powder in an airtight container. One fourth teaspoon of this powder can be added in baby's food before cooking. It gives around 9 mg of calcium. Next, let's learn how to make the powder of drumstick leaves. This powder contains a good amount of calcium, iron, vitamin C, vitamin A, protein and sulphur. These nutrients are required for the development of gums and the healthy eyes of the baby. They fight against infection and improves the strength of the baby. We will require drumstick leaves for making this powder. Procedure First, wash all the drumstick leaves thoroughly in clean water. Dry these leaves under the shade. Now make a powder of these dried drumstick leaves and store this powder in an airtight container. One fourth teaspoon of this powder should be added to the baby's food before cooking. It will provide around 5 mg of calcium. Apart from these, always remember the following. Curry leaves powder and drumstick leaves powder should be given with calcium rich foods such as roasted sesame seeds, sprouted chickpeas, sprouted Bengal gram, etc. Once the baby completes 9 months, these powders can be given with curd. Also, one can use any local and seasonal nuts, seeds and beans for making these powder recipes. Don't forget to add these powders in every meal of your baby and each powder should be added before cooking as the powder needs to be cooked along with the meal. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining.